You better watch out for the disco yeti, yeah. Cause if you see him, you should run. Yes, they wrote a song and made a music video. And here is how we did it, and here is how you can do it too. My name is Leilani, and this is our channel, Living with Eve. Our channel is here to empower you, the parent, to raise your exceptional child. If you're interested in finding out more what our channel has to offer you, go ahead and click on this channel trailer up above. And if you are inspired, consider subscribing and make sure to click on that notification bell so you can get notifications every time we do an upload every Tuesday and Friday. And you can also binge on our old videos too. And in this video, I'm gonna include one simple activity that you can do with your kids with no musical experience whatsoever that will inspire your kids to want to learn how to play an instrument and write music. And make sure to stay to the end so you can see my kids' completed project in a musical video form. Number one, we first picked a topic that they loved. And if you've been following our channel for any amount of time, you know we picked something that had to do with Disney. And my kids love the story of the Disco Yeti. All right, I'm gonna nerd out on you guys, okay? So there is this ride at Animal Kingdom called Mount Everest, and it's a roller coaster, and at the end of the ride, there is a Yeti that reaches out and tries to grab the roller coaster as you pass underneath him. Well, what happened was, is they built a giant, humongous animatronic, and he is absolutely amazing, and he's huge, and he's very heavy, and when they installed him into the Mount Everest ride, after a period of time, he was moving so much that it actually started cracking the foundation of the ride, and they had to stop the animatronic and just place a strobe light on him in a still position. Now he's called by the cast members, she, the Disco Yeti. So we took this idea and we wrote a song about it. Disco Yeti, run. Step two, we found music. Yes, we found music that is copyright free. And I did this for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to make a music video and share this with you on YouTube and I want to make sure it's copyright free. Second, I wanted to skip the hardest part and the task that's going to take the most amount of time to inspire them to write the melody and the poetry, the more creative side of things that I know that is easier to do for them at this time of life. By doing this, they're inspired by the music and we're allowing them to take an idea and add their own creativity to it and trying to find ways to just kind of weave what they want to say in and out of the track that's already laid. This builds confidence, self-esteem, and also gives them a musical style that they can file away into their musical filing cabinet so they can pull it out and maybe write a song, an actual song later on, like this. Now we found our music on the YouTube audio library that if you do have a YouTube channel or even an account, you can go in and download any of those songs for free. And of course they're copyright free and you can use them freely on YouTube. So it's not a problem. It makes life a lot easier. So the third task we did, we already had the theme of the song and we already have the music and the style. Now I just gotta play this thing on loop over and over and over again and let my kids create the melody and the words to go with it. And as a parent, I sit down, allow them to naturally come up with these words and phrases and melody, and I just start jotting them down. And then I'll start singing along with them to encourage them to just go deeper and deeper into their little creative minds. And of course, after a while, we take a break and repeat these phrases back to them so now they can start forming a structure. Now we kept it simple. We did, you know, verse one, chorus, verse two, chorus, and for the music nerds, A, B, A, B form. We did this third step over a period of day because after a while the song got old. Adding rhythm, adding rhyme, keeping what worked and throwing away what didn't work and eventually we had a song. Why are there so many hair bands? There must be a thousand and six. I heard it to mom the engineers to get the Disco Yeti fixed. Step four, this is practicing. Before we could practice, I had to do a little bit of work myself. I took the track that I downloaded from YouTube and I took the lyrics to their song and I recorded it on a program called Audacity. Audacity is a free multi-track editor and recorder. It takes a little bit of work to learn how to use it, but it really is simple. Once I completed 
the song. I downloaded it onto my phone and we just casually in the car, around the house, played the song and the kids sang along with me. And they didn't mind hearing it over and over and over and over and over again. I did. But they didn't mind because it was their own creation. Through this process, they were also able to self-distribute the parts out, so that actually turned out pretty easy. Step five was recording, and it was by far the hardest task of this project. Because you want your kids to speak up and sing it perfectly, and it's really hard to get it right the first time. Cause no, 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 just Hannah. See him, you should be wrong. As you do it, you'll learn little tips and tricks, and sometimes you just want to let the mistakes go. Disco Yeti went. Disco Yeti went. Disco Yeti went. And you know what? That's fine. I once again used Audacity and we all pushed through it. This took about two days, but we pushed through it and got it recorded. And voila, you have a song recorded that your kids just created. Okay, so we added a step. This was the music video recording. And for this, I just let them guide me. They told me where they wanted to go. They told me what props they wanted to use, what costumes they wanted to use. So obviously we went to Animal Kingdom. And obviously we took footage of the roller coaster and played around in that area. And during the editing process, allow them to sit with you and give you some ideas of how they want the video footage. You may not like it, but that's totally okay. It's their creation. And I'm gonna tell you right now, editing does take a long time if you've never done it before. And there will be times that they walk off and leave you and you're gonna have to do it yourself. It's okay. Now eventually I want them to learn how to write their own music. But in order to do this, you gotta give them a nice firm foundation. So there's a couple things that you can do to develop this firm foundation. And number one is get them to learn an instrument. Piano, guitar, violin, any instrument. Two, you can start to teach them basic chord structures. And three, teach them how to string the chords together. If you don't know how to do this, I have a great book that you guys can check out. This book is called Chord Crash Course by Mary D. Winters and it's exactly that. It's gonna teach you chord progression so it can get you from just the basic techniques to the writing process. This is one of my favorite pages that actually teach you chord progressions so that you can start stringing those chords together and creating your own song. Some songs, in all honesty, are made from three chords or four chords or five chords and they're catchy and popular. After a while, you may be impressed to dig deeper. One thing you can do is teach them how to use basic music writing software, such as GarageBand. At first, this seems like an overwhelming and daunting task, and it does take time. Make sure that if you decide to do this, and when you do this, to set small goals, take baby steps. You know, think of it as writing. The first thing your child does is learn the letters or notes. And then after a while, a child write a sentence. Now you got a phrase. Then they're gonna write a paragraph. And then you got yourself a chorus. Think of it that way. Think baby steps. Don't ever expect a third grader to write an entire song in a day. It takes time. But with support and encouragement and time and motivation, they will be able to do it. Because if you can write a story, you can write a song. And if this is something that you're interested in me making a video for, let me know in the comments down below because I would love to explore this even deeper with you guys to help get your kids learning music. So now I want you to enjoy the music video that my kids created. Once again, if you like it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up and enjoy. Are you ready to dance? Mount Everest is my favorite ride at Tissue Sea Star. The mountain is so tall and wide, it feels like you can fly. You better watch out for the disco yeti, yeah. Cause if you see him, you should run. Disco yeti, run. Disco yeti, run. Disco Yeti 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 run. Now 
and it's going backwards and you don't know what to do. Look! The Yeti! He's tearing up the track. Woo! And now you're going down. 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 Disco Yeti, run! Disco Yeti, run! Disco Yeti, run! Music is a science. It is exact, specific. Sheet music is a chart, a graph, which shows frequencies, intensities, volume changes, melody, and harmony all at once. Music is math, rhythm, fractions, and it's all done instantaneously, not worked out on paper. Music is a foreign language. The terms are in Italian, German, or even French, and notation is certainly not in English, but symbols that represent ideas. Music is history. It is a reflection of environment, times, and culture. Music is all of these things, but most importantly, music is art. It allows a human being to take all of these techniques to create beauty, emotion, and interpretation. No other discipline can do that. And I haven't even talked about what it does for the brain. So why not teach your children music?